My name is Melina Jürgens and I work for Ninja Theory and um, I've been their video editor, their photographer and now also their actress. <laughs> Well, I started 2012 where I was asked to do behind the scenes photography for Devil May Cry. Um, and then I evolved into being the video editor as well. I've done all the DMC trailers and then moved on to all, doing all the Hellblade trailers and all the Death Diaries that you can see on YouTube, the behind the scenes. And then, um, yeah, they just kept asking me if I could be a stand-in for their like technical experiments. <laughs> and um, yeah, at some point the director was like, could you just, and like, act out the scene for us and I was like mm, not really like I, I'm not an actress and I don't know how to act and he was like just give it a try please and then I did it and they were like blown away and thought I had some potential to do the actual job yeah. I found it quite hard because I'm not used to being in front of the camera because my whole life I've always worked behind the camera as a photographer or a video editor also I'm, I was quite introverted and shy and um, I found it really hard to come out of my shell and perform in front of people so I think that's why my first ever performance was a bit overdramatic because I was just so nervous that I was just, yeah, I was shouting a lot. <laughs> but they really liked it. <laughs> but yeah, it was quite dramatic. <laughs> yeah, so we've decided to build an in-house motion capture studio in our meeting room, um, which like some people were quite annoyed about because the meeting room was always busy. Um, but we used like things from Ikea, like uh, wardrobe poles and screw the cameras onto the poles and um, ordered like lights from Amazon and um, we just made use of it a lot like because it was in-house like sometimes we would shoot stuff once a week at least and just do like lots of pickup scenes and we were very flexible having the studio in-house. I don't really have anything to compare it to so it's hard to tell but um, I found it quite cool that it was so flexible because I'm not an experienced actress and if I got something wrong I easily had the chance to just do it again the next day if I felt like it because it was not a big deal like we didn't have to go down to London and hire an entire studio for a day only because I got something wrong and I didn't feel like or felt like I needed to repeat something so we could just easily do that. The challenges were obviously the mental health side of things so the character um, suffers from voice hearing and seeing visions and we worked closely with a neuroscientist called uh, Dr. Professor Paul Fletcher and then some people that have experience with seeing visions and hearing voices. So we had meetings with them and they told me what it feels like and uh, I had some lectures by the professor as well. So it was really interesting to understand the human brain a bit more and learn about that. And then um, yeah, playing the character was quite challenging because it's a big responsibility to portray mental health. And um, I have my own experiences with it as well. Like my father had psychosis and I suffer from quite a lot of anxiety myself. So it wasn't so hard for me to connect with the character because I could just, I know it from my own life. Um, but yeah, it was just a big responsibility on my shoulders to get it right because you don't want to upset anyone that has told you their personal stories, you know. <laughs> I kind of often just spend some time alone in a room and just try different variations of how I would play the scene. And then on other days, I would just walk in and do it without even rehearsing it. So it always depended on like my mood, I guess. Like sometimes I would just not even read the script. I would just improvise. And sometimes if I had a sad day, I would ask if we could play a slightly more sad scene today. And if I felt a bit more energetic, I asked if we could do something a bit more like a fight scene. So it was a lot like method acting, I guess. That's what you call it. And um, yeah, just taking my own life experiences and my own like traumas I've had in my life, for example, and then connecting them with the character and bringing them out. So if I was crying in Hellblade, like if Senua is crying, then I was actually crying as well. It wasn't just played, you know, like it was real emotions. I guess the most surprising thing to me was how much patience you need to have, because sometimes if there's like a technical thing that isn't quite going well, you have to just sit there for like eight, nine hours and with people fiddling around on you. And I was quite surprised that um, just how it feels like you're constantly wearing this helmet and you've got lights in your face and you can't really see anything around you because you're always blinded by the lights and then you have all your representations taped to your ears so you can't hear anyone and you're basically cut out like from the outside, you're cut off from the outside world, you can't talk to anyone. So sometimes people will be like, oh Melina, and I'm like, is someone talking to me? I can't see and I can't hear because I'm like in this bubble, in this motion capture bubble. I didn't really look for inspiration or anything, I just 
kind of tried to get my feral side out, I guess, <laughs> like the wild side. <laughs> um, spend a lot of time like just in the forest and shouting in the forest, <laughs> like trying out different scenes when I'm on my own. And um, yeah, just, yeah, I didn't really, didn't really look for inspiration. I'm still their video editor, so I still continue doing all the video side of things. I really enjoy that and I don't really want to give that up. So if I'm doing acting, it's a thing that I do on the side and then I also keep up my video editing. Difficult to get, get, uh, give advice because um, I wasn't really planning on working in that industry. It kind of just happened. But I guess I would say just try and say yes a bit more often. Like if there's something challenging coming along and you think, oh, can I do it or can I not just like, just do it? Like when they asked me if I wanted to do that job uh, with the acting, I was like, well, I kind of want to, but I'm really scared. So I was thinking about saying no, but imagine if I had said no, no that day, like I would not be sitting here. So I think take your chances if they're there, just try it even if you're like scared about it. <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping that we will develop the real time life stuff a bit more. That was really interesting when we did the performance where you could play a scene and it's straight away in the game. I think if we could explore that a bit more, that'd be really interesting because then you could kind of play the character in its environment and you know what's what it's going to look like straight away. You're not like just in a white room, but you can actually see straight away what it would be like. Yeah, that would be quite helpful because sometimes you're like fighting a monster and you have no clue what they look like. But if you could actually see it straight away, that would be quite helpful.